One achievement for Crusader 2 that sticks out was, was it Fetre La Vache one, um, which I, think, I, I can be honest, we sort of started with a Monty Python reference and, and, and worked backwards, um, which um, as some of the more hardcore players of that game will, will know, it's, it's quite a difficult achievement to get. And yes, in, in hindsight, maybe we should have started with the achievement and then worked towards the reference rather than the other way around. <laughs> so I've worked at Firefly for about six years now. Um, the first project I worked on uh, was Stronghold Kingdoms. Um, that's what I was brought in, hired to work on, and that's, yeah, that's where I started. I, I very much enjoy working on Stronghold Crusader 2. Um, I, mean, I was hired to work on Kingdoms, and I did work on that throughout, um, but then as sort of Crusader 2 uh, entered the final stages of development, the last year or so, um, I, 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 my background is in C++, which is the programming language Crusader 2 is made using. Um, so I was able to come on board um, and lend an extra set of hands. The one thing I've learned you know, during my time at Firefly is not to overthink things beforehand. Yeah. Um, you, know, you want to plan, uh, you want to have an idea in your head of what you want to do, um, but you know, theory crafting it only goes so far. Um, it's better to kind of, yeah, get, a, get an idea of what you're gonna do and sort of crack on and then see what comes up in the process, doing whatever it is you're doing. Nice. To be honest, my favorite thing about working at Firefly uh, is the people, even if that sounds a little bit cringy possibly. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good, good bunch of folks. You know, everybody wants to be there, everybody loves what they're working on and uh, that makes for a you know, really cool environment. Professionally, I'd say the launch of Crusader 2, um, just because it's the first time I could see something I'd worked on there for sale in like the Steam store, yeah. like a proper game. It was pretty <laughs> cool. Favourite memories are Friday afternoon spent working out Steam achievements. Yeah, you can't make me pick my favorite Steam. <laughs> just like make, picking your favorite, uh, favorite show. I mean, um, one achievement for Crusader 2 that sticks out was, was it Fetre La Vache, um, which I think, I, I can be honest, we sort of started with a Monty Python reference and, and, and worked backwards, um, which, um, as some of the more hardcore players of that game will, will know, it's, it's quite a difficult achievement to get. And yes, in, in hindsight, maybe we should have started with the achievement and then worked towards the reference rather than the other way around. Uh, but, you know, no regrets. It's a solid reference, if nothing else. Presumably by that point, you know, it'll all just be holograms. <laughs> beamed into our heads. Uh, yeah, that, that seems like a realistic prediction for 10 years time, right? So uh, in our like driverless flying cars, yeah. playing our hologram stronghold. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it could be really fun. Could, fun. VR, well, like VR RTS is, there's not a, you know, there's yeah, not a huge, not, there's not a huge number of them. And I, I think, well, you know, I've, I've done a bit of like sort of tabletop uh, gaming in my time. And I think that could be quite a good good take on it. So you know, you're standing over your sort of your virtual yeah. your virtual table. Um, so I was brought in. Uh, I was brought in to work on Kingdoms uh, just after the Steam launch. Yeah. Basically, okay. we knew we'd got something big on our hands before then, but um, that was when it really sort of skyrocketed. And part of that, maybe you know, fortuitous timing. Mm -hmm. uh, there weren't a huge number of free to play games on, on Steam, certainly not any strategy ones. Yeah. Um, so that was you know, something that people clearly wanted. Uh, we provided it. Both for me personally and, um, and the company as a whole, there are some pretty big differences going from like a traditional 
boxed game to an online sort of service-based game. I mean, whilst I wasn't there for the early days of Kingdoms, believe me, I, I know a lot about what happened. And I mean, it actually, Kingdoms started off as a, as a side project okay. uh, with just one of the guys. Yeah, a guy called uh, Andy Prime. Um, but yeah, no, and he sort of... So a a Andy started working on it uh, solo and it went through sort of various prototypes, um, some of which I've seen. There's the, 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 the infamous Click Wars, which looked, you know, like the Kingdom's map. Yeah. Except c controlling or capturing a village was just a case of clicking on it. Mm -hmm. So it was basically you know, an intense game of, you know, who can click faster than the other guy. So you know, that's where it started. So yeah, humble, humble beginnings. I sort of learning the tech as they went. Um, I know Paul played a big part in that. Um, like literally going in and wiring up servers by hand in person in the early days. It's not like now where you've got, you know, things are a lot more convenient. Um, but yeah, there was the sort of the learning curve there with, you know, having the infrastructure involved and and everything that goes with it. Even to, uh, for another example, you know, the multi-language support. Um, so Kingdoms, you know, started off in English and they added these other languages. And it became very apparent that we needed people on staff, you know, from those countries or yeah, who yeah. speak that language, um, which is the kind of thing I think doesn't necessarily occur to you beforehand if yeah. you're used to more traditional because the traditional model is kind of you develop the game and then you sort of you know when it's almost there you get somebody to localize it for you and then they come back with the translations and uh, and done um i mean and that's quite indicative of the differences in general you know like so working on yeah crusader 2 yeah you had we had the the launch date the deadline uh and very much working towards that um, and obviously, whilst we did have follow-on updates, uh, it was very specific milestones, yeah, as, yeah. as they call them. Whereas Kingdoms uh, is much more an sort of ongoing yeah, so. process, uh, both in terms of you know, fixing things that crop up and you know, adding new features, seeing what people like, trying to sort of double down yeah. on the stuff that people enjoy. Quite, uh, I think it's reactive, yeah. you'd maybe call it. From a slightly drier programming point of view, uh, more traditional, like say C++ programming, you're used to having, you know, you write your, you write your script out, as it yeah. were, and you can sort of follow the chain of events that happens. You can sort of step through the code and there's a, there's a sequence to it. Whereas with something like Kingdoms, suddenly you've now got a server sat with code elsewhere. So you can no longer just go through like this, you know, you'll go da da da, and then off it goes to somewhere else. Other stuff's happening on a completely different machine elsewhere, and then you know you get the response back, and you have to. So yes, that was quite an adjustment, having to get used to the slightly more freeform sort of call and response structure that comes with that. I mean, Kingdoms actually the very very first prototype started out as basically a flash game. Um, now, I don't know if that's a bit before your, your time, um, but we used to have this thing on the internet, you go on a website. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't quite Flash. It was sort of a variation on that. But um, yeah, that's, that's how it started out. I mean, at the time, that, that seemed to be the way things were going. Um, but it soon became apparent that really it needed its own standalone client. Mm -hmm. So then the move was made to sort of more traditional programming tech. Yeah, a few years working on the original version, um, we decided we want to make the move to, to mobile. Um, so we looked to Unity, um, which is sort of a programming system, uh, to help make that transition, which was, um, it was a very interesting process. I, you had the, the sort of technical changes that were required, but there's also a lot of kind of, I don't want to say infrastructure that goes with it, but there's a lot more consider. Once you go onto mobile, there's a whole bunch of extra considerations. Uh, you know, you, you, obviously you've now got people using their fingers yeah. rather than a mouse. Mm -hmm. um, you probably can't see my hands there. 
Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, cool. You use your fingers <laughs> rather than a mouse. But also, um, you've got such a wide range of you know, screen sizes and resolutions. Yeah. Uh, that turned out to be uh, an interesting sort of learning curve. Uh, you get one phone and you test it, you're like, oh yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And then you sort of pull out an iPad and you're like, wait, no, this, <laughs> these buttons are several miles across. <laughs> Um, so eventually I added in a you know, system for letting you sort of customize the size of the UI. So that was an interesting challenge. Then just the process of you know, getting things on the Play Store and the, uh, and the, the iTunes Store. Mm -hmm. That was, again, so, because to, previously in the original version of Kingdoms, it had its own updater. So we yeah. you know, make an update and yeah. push us out ourselves, um, sort of completely self-reliant. But then with you know, iOS and Android, we have to go through sort of the submission processes and talk to Apple, talk to Google, yeah. and all that, all that stuff. And it added, yes, an extra layer of complexity. And to be honest, when I came onto Crusader 2, uh, the learning curve with sort of the tech involved um, was far more prominent in my mind than the pressure to carry on the legacy. <laughs> Um, but uh, as, as release drew near, um, yeah, there was a sense that, you know, we needed to uh, do right by the fans. Um, and it, it was a follow-up to an extremely popular game. And there were, there were specific things that made the original Crusader popular. So it was important to keep that, that DNA, yeah. um, as I say, um, there in, in the game. It's sort a of big debate or issue I remember with Crusader 2 um, was the move from 2D to 3D because obviously the first Crusader game was you know, traditionally yeah. it was a traditional 2D game but this you know, was a fully 3D rendered system and one thing we found with sort of previous 3D Stronghold titles is actually the, the freedom that, that, that 3D allows you in terms of placement mm -hmm. of buildings and such didn't necessarily mesh that well with the with the with the the gameplay. Um, so for Crusader Two, we ended up moving back to even though it's three D, yeah. we sort of kept a two D grid tile system um, for the placement of buildings and that sort of thing because it just it made the game feel more straightforward, yeah. for lack of a better term. Apologies for kind of being a bit cryptic here. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're adding a whole sort of new level of new, new form of gameplay to the to the to the Stronghold series. Um, something that sort of sits on top of the the traditional Stronghold sort of core mechanics. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm quite excited to see what players do with this added level of of strategy. Um, and it's something we've been working on quite closely. Yeah, no, I'd like to say you know, thank you to all the fans. Uh, see all the comments, see the feedback. Uh, good and bad, but we like, I like both because, you know, it shows that people care. One of the nice things about working on these titles is you're working on something that you know people care about, mm -hmm. um, which, which, you know, means a lot. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with us and um, hope you enjoy what we've got coming down the pipeline.